Welcome back. If you watched the first video, you've got your personal developer instance and you've written a couple of scripts. Now let's go and explore the language from the bottom up. This is no different than learning a spoken language where you learn the letters and the sounds they make, then you can put words together and words become sentences and you've got the meaning. So we're going to start very, very simply with the same type of syntax. The syntax of JavaScript is made up of statements. And just like before, I've got scripts available at this repository. If you want to look for lesson two, you can find them there. Let me put that away and go right to the lesson two script. I'm going to break this down very simplistically. Once again, I'm going to go to scripts background, I type that in at the top and get my little background script editor. And this is one of the most simple statements I can give you. It is to create a variable, we'll call this name and put your name in the quotes. That is a, sta a JavaScript statement. It's made up of a var keyword. It's got a semicolon at the end to tell JavaScript, I'm done, this is the end of that line. We'll talk about where they're necessary and where they're optional, but most statements in JavaScript have a semicolon at the end to kind of tell you it's a delimiter at the end of that. There are some exceptions to this. I could also create some other variables, some output statement as we saw in the first one, gs.info is a way to output some information. And I'm gonna paste in that big script that we had before. And we'll go through this a little at a time. So where are these semicolons actually needed? Well, they are needed, they're required on statements where it doesn't make sense where one line ends and where it begins. If I have a variable i, and then I increment i, I'm trying to put two things on one line, it wouldn't make any sense to say var i equals zero i plus plus, it gets all confused, there's no, there's no delineation between those. Those are two separate statements, two clauses that I want to make. So this is, mandatory. If I put them on different lines, I can get away with that because now there is a new line separator in here where the semicolon is optional. I don't really go for that. I am going to put a semicolon on each one of those. In fact, if you start using the, not if, when you start using the script editor in ServiceNow, it will give you a little orange box that says, you know, you should really have a semicolon on the end of this. So get in the practice for simple statements like this, put it on the end of there. It's optional, as I mentioned, on a lot of these where it's just a simple statement of i equals i plus one. Not needed there. In fact, let's take that out and try it. Var equals i equals zero and plus plus i. Oops, I do it out of habit. And I run that script. There's nothing wrong with that. It actually created this and I can put in my gs.info put the value of i in there and it will say one. Very nice. Could get you in trouble if somebody comes along later and tries to add something like that to it. That will throw an error. I'm going to get into error messages and whatnot in just a little bit, but that clearly did not run. If I do my diligence and put a semicolon at the end of it and I'm at the end of this one, it works just fine. So. It's optional in that case. Back to my textbook, we'll call this. All right, so I've got some optional places, but I like to overdo it on semicolons. Now, you can actually over overdo it if you're dealing with if statements for conditional, where you want it to run if this clause is true. We'll talk about that in a later episode. Or looping for while, okay, that makes it a little trickier. You don't need them, don't put them there it will actually get you in trouble. However, there is one looping construct that I will get to called a do while, it's there. Don't ask, I didn't make up the language, it doesn't really make sense, I don't know why. There's also, as we get to make reusable blocks of code into functions, we will put them after, or we will not put them after a function statement. So semicolons don't go after functions. Again, this is available in the repository that I showed earlier. I'll show it again and I'll have it in the comments for this video. Uh, there are exceptions for some of these, of course. 
The for loop has semicolons embedded in it to separate the three parts of that. I will be talking about for loops in a little bit. And not all of them get it. So this is not something that I, well, maybe I can run it, but it's probably going to freak out. Yeah, there's, there's syntax errors in here. It was meant more for documentation purposes. That is uh, the lesson two, where these semicolons go, and some simple statements to uh, demonstrate that. So look forward to talking to you more about the variables in the next lesson. I hope you join me there. Until then, go and get this script. Run it on your personal developer instance. Tweak it. Find out. Get it. Get familiar where semicolons are available, optional, required, not available. Talk to you later.